to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, and what a surprise, he's going to be teaching us about all of the most crazy things in Warhammer 40k, but before he does, if you enjoy today's podcast, consider supporting us on Patreon over at patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to bloopers, behind the scenes stuff, get access to our Discord, some real real nice uh, HD posters. Uh, the current one is a... Uh, uh, it's a tyrannid female that has some gigantic venom sacks. Uh, that's what I'm told those are. Those are venom sacks. Those are not... Uh, Hmm, this is going nowhere good. Just trust me, it's a good poster. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, tell us about the books and all of our sick merch. Yo. I, I, I really want us to get a new poster so we can stop talking about the Tyranid one. Well, I guess you'll just have to wait a month. Yeah, ne next month. That's why it's a great idea to be a patron. Because you might <laughs> always get a new one. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, so a couple things. Book Club is Twice Dead King Reign. I have about three hours left, oh. and um, I, if you are a Blood Angels fan, I would very much recommend the book, at least for the, the, uh, the involvement. Uh, oh, also... Okay. Well, we'll 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 get we'll get without yeah, yeah, spoiling yeah, yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you want some merch, check out orchidate.com or link in the description. We got shirts, hoodies, tees, and we actually have new dice and new stickers. We hey. have a new Doge Van Dyer stickers based on our new emotes that you can get either by being a YouTube member or joining the Discord. And so there's some new stickers in there. Check out the merch site for the new stickers. It's super fun. And last but not least, night. Drawing pilot plus night digital mm -hmm. art contest will be over at the end of February. So you have the rest of the month to submit your submission. It is in the uh, it is in the description. And also you can send it to us on Twitter. You can get money if you, you do yep. good. Yep. So that's There's that. some real sick entries too. Like y'all have been knocking it out the park. Yeah, so. that's some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. DK. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm ready to fuck sir. up a quote. Sir. Sir. Uh, oh, no. I'm not, I'm the one who fucks up with a quote. You're the one who fucks up interpreting a quote. Ah, uh, right, right. Still, we fuck up a quote real bad. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Here we Here we go. Here we go. Um, Hit me here with we your go. best shot. Fire away. <laughs> Fire away. All right. I'm surprised you got the reference, actually. It's a song. It's not that hard. It's like I know, but it's a boomer me? song. It's like an ultra boomer song. DK, do you know what pour some sugar on me actually means? Uh, I, well, I thought they were just taking giant bags of sugar and pouring it on them. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Do you know what it means now? No, actually, I don't. You don't? You don't actually? No. It means no, so come, it like a... DK. Ah, it means gotcha. come. Okay, okay. It it's definitely a, it's, means it's a come. semen reference. Okay, gotcha. correct, correct. Like so, they, yo. so that's what Isha's singing in the jar. Yeah, Def Leppard were all in the Navy. Ah, Did, actually, they were, I didn't know that because they were no, they were all they were all semen. They're not actually in the. Oh, uh, wow, all right. man, your jokes are bad. I am, I am. <laughs> your jokes suck. Bricky. I am crushed to hear that from you of all people. <laughs> of all people. That's the, that's the, yeah. That's the biggest The bar I've sunk to? Mm -hmm. Is, Is that the, not, the, the... You can't even make me laugh at your dumb shit. <laughs> Is that the jar I've drowned in? Yep. You are in that jar. And the jar all is right. full. Alright, well, well, the jar has a quote written on it. And this is the mm -hmm. quote. Okay. <clears throat> Find pleasure in every moment. Indulge in every whim. Let lesser races feel the burden of their crude lives. We are beyond such concerns or worries. Every power is ours to use. Every sensation ours to experience. We are truly masters of the galaxy. And all others exist only to satisfy our curiosities. We have earned our position of power. Let us forever taste the fruits of such achievement. Time itself is ours to command. We are eternal. Wow, that that sounds like a that sounds like some Eldar bullshit. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah. 
That's that. That sounds some, like some high and mighty Eldar bullshit. Uh, uh, excess wanting everything and feeling like they're far more superior to everybody in in the galaxy. Pretty good. So, is your final answer that we're talking about Eldar? <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna say yes, but if I'm wrong, I'm worried that it could also be Emperor's children because we've talked. Uh, I don't. I'll give you... I don't know. I don't know what else we could talk about with the Eldar, though. Like, what what haven't we covered? Like, is it a specific person? Is it a faction? Like, we've covered Craft World. We covered Drukari. We've covered. Uh, um, Oh, okay, just, well, well, whatever. Harlequins, you doofus, but oh, right, 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 Clussy. Uh, yeah, oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> well, the, no, there's plenty to still cover. We haven't talked about corsairs. We haven't talked about exodites, and we can always do like the individual craft worlds, like we did with the with the Dark Eldar episode, and also the troops oh, and things. Yeah. But here is a second quote. <clears throat> can we play with him, Master? He seems so unhappy. Let us help him smile, please. Or at least let us carve one on his face when he stops screaming. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Uh, this definitely sounds Eldar. Yeah, Eldar, final answer. Yep. Wow. No, it's it's Slanesh, you fuck. Oh. You were so on the right... Can we carve a thing? Well, that sounds like a that totally sounds like an Eldar thing. They want sounds like they a dark make Eldar a, thing. Yes, there's probably dark Eldar stuff we haven't talked about. We've already were, done two you, episodes. You just them? went on a tangent about how there's always more Eldar stuff. Oh my god, they were literally talking about the fall when we were like, oh, everything in ours is ours to command. We have no problems anymore. That's ha what happened before. It's Slanesh got birth. Whatever, man. Tell me oh about Slanesh. It was, so is right. it Emperor's Children or is it specifically Slanesh? No, nah, we're doing like Slanesh, Slanesh. Like just okay, cool, Slanesh. Cool. All right, all right, all right. We got, we got, we got to get a tall glass of Slanesh. Yeah, I need that. I'm thirsty today, lads. Hey, let's go. Need that You're tall about to glass. Tall glass of Slanesh. Need that Collins glass of Slanesh. A what glass? It's a Collins glass. It's like a highball glass. You know, it's, it's actually a, that's a tall glass. It's a, I think it's a Collins glass. Yeah. Well, we're definitely gonna be talking about balls today. Mmm. Mmm. Balls All right. on the field. Ball. <laughs> um. Slanesh. Yeah. You know, we talked about corn. We did Nurgle. We're doing Slanesh. Slanesh, right. also known as the Dark Prince, the Prince of Pleasure, the Lord of Excess, the Perfect Prince, the Prince of Chaos, or Salenthrech, Salenthrech, <laughs> she who thirsts. Um, Salenthrech. Get that phlegm uh, these... out, buddy, before the episode starts. You gotta really just hawk up that phlegm before. The... Yeah. Ironically, the sacred number of Slanesh is six, but unfortunately, it is not nine as well. Oh. That would be though. We're we're halfway through, you know. Yeah, that'd be two on Tip the nose, even for GW. <laughs> Too typical to Slanesh, where it lures you in with the first number and then fucks you up afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, the It says here in the wiki, the portfolio of Slanesh is pleasure, <laughs> passion, excess, hedonism, decadence, and pain. Okay. Um, That's, that sounds so, very slanesh -y. yep. Very slanesh -y. So, Slanesh, uh, for a recap, at least for the people who probably are like, I want to know about Slanesh. They clicked on this video without looking at the Eldar ones. Mm -hmm. Naturally, the Eldar at the height of their power, had no issues ever. They had no problems with food. They had no problems with money. They had no problems even with death as their yeah. souls would be reincarnated. And so they couldn't even die normally. So everything was so fucking easy. When shit is so easy, you go and try to find more and more weird shit to do. Yep. So their depravity sunk heavy, heavy, heavy. Starting off with you know you know a little bit of rope play, a little bit of <laughs> yep. little 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 bit a little bit of uh, uh, choking here and there, and then yep. then they started pulling out knives, and then they started pulling out syringes, and yeah. then they started killing people for for stage plays, and then they just started yep. then they just started murder fucking everyone. Yep. And uh, you know it is uh what what the hell what the hell is this shy satire of the decadent west so-called civilization comrade ah <laughs> uh, okay uh, wow capitalism right. at its finest <laughs> well done well done uh despite the eldar being based on the east but um yeah. despite it all 
this all came to a head. This all began to bloat, and then boom, Slanesh comes out in the the just a gigantic blast. It creates the Eye of Terror uh, due Big to suck. its arrival, and then it, and then it just goes and yep. sucks in all the souls of over ninety percent of Slanesh or uh, Eldar population. Consumes most of their gods, most of their people, and leaves them a fucked up, fractured race where the craft yeah. world survive by or where all all dead Eldar go to Slanesh in time, with the craft world staving it off via soul stones, the Jukari staving it off by reincarnating themselves through creepy vats, and the Harlequin staving it off through clown jokes. <laughs> and they're and they're laughing god Kekarak. and they're laughing god Kekarak. Kekarak. and so slanesh is now here uh birthed from the murder fuckery of this of the eldar uh though unfortunately uh mostly fed by humanity because uh despite ah, yes. all of chaos's shenanigans and eldar being pricks uh we we as humans have given the chaos their most amount of power Oh yeah, and ninety percent of the Eldar got eaten. So like, there's there's not that many Eldar out there, but there's still a shitload of humans doing debaucherous shit. So, you know, yeah, probably gets way a... more fed by uh, the Imperium and humanity. Humanity has the most uh, chaos has the most champions from humanity, due to yeah. the fact that we're like a tyrannid sized race because there's so many so many humans, so fucking many of them. Uh, when you look at the guard and how many uh, how many people the Imperium can just throw away at a whim, it's like, oh yeah, yeah those, there can be quite a lot. And if you're reading so, Twice Dead King, you know how much of a fucking like tyrannid swarm the Imperium can act like if they want. Yeah, it's, yeah seriously, they're they're more alien than the aliens. Mm -hmm. um, here's another quote uh, from someone named Tyrell, renegade I Lord of Arden Nine, I think says, take care, lest your protests become tiresome. I have asked for so little. Anyone would think that I had asked you to sacrifice yourselves and your sons. And yet, in Slanesh's boundless and pleasing mercy, I have asked only for your daughters. Surely you would not <laughs> deny me my small enjoyments. Oh, that's that's great. What a, yeah. that's, that's so, boy, that's... That's a Slanesh. That's a Slanesh. That's a tall glass of Slanesh. That's a tall glass of Slanesh. That's a Das Boot of Slanesh. Jesus. Uh, yo, what, oh, fuck. What's that place in Vegas where they have the really big drinks? Raph is going to kill me. No, <laughs> sh shut up. Um, I mean, it's God. Vegas. So, obviously, when it comes to Slanesh and the Slaneshy things, it, it's important to always remind, even though it's memed on plenty, and we are perpetrators of said meme, <laughs> it is important to remind everyone that Slanesh is not just sex. No, uh, it's sl also drugs and rock and roll. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm giving you three minutes. Ooh, three yeah, Three minutes brother. of playtime. <laughs> Okay. Here we go again. Strap Here yourselves in. It's gonna be a ride. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Macho <laughs> man Randy Slanesh. Yeah. Road to WrestleMania. Oh yeah, brother. You're going in the glory hole, brother. <laughs> oh no. Oh boy. This Ooh. truly is the Slanesh episode. <laughs> glory Ooh. hells have been have been talked about in less than twenty minutes of the episode. Ooh, spread those cheeks wide, brother. Uh. Ooh, slow down, brother. You come too fast. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> wrestling me wrestling memes aside um fucking slanesh right so so it's 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 the idea mainly of sensation mm -hmm. and, and there is of course lust but since i'd argue sensation is the easiest one word descriptor mm -hmm. um because if you have sensation that means taste touch and touch means like obviously sex but touch also means pain you've also got noise hearing so so you know all that loud crap yeah. and like excess music uh sights and visuals just sensation so it also is like a sensation of, of feeling remember because there's also the both sides of the slanesh coin you've got all the bad which is torture murder and, and lots of that awful stuff but then you've also yeah. got the good part which is 
the feel like like feeling like pride is a sensation happiness oh. is a sensation being happy and being sad are both slanesh things being excited you know being being overwhelmed with stimuli yeah. so it's not just like debaucherous lewd uh excess it's it's just like an excess of feelings and emotions and sensations of any kind be they good bad or indifferent it, that uh, she slanesh she slash he slash they because that's what slanesh is there's no there's no specific male female or in between that's just assumed as whatever the fuck mm -hmm. um is yeah it, it's the best way is is uh the prince of unspeakable excess damn so slanesh is eating good in the neighborhood because like that's just yeah wow how is slanesh not like the most overwhelmingly broken overpowered chaos god in existence with how much they eat well because slanesh is is young also uh if you think about nurgle which is the lord of death and decay it's a lot oh, of wow. that that's... yeah there is um, <laughs> that's true in 40k Z there's yeah okay okay zinch is lying greed and trickery there's a lot oh, of that well, there's a lot of that that's true that's fair and corn is murder. <laughs> oh, you know, when you when you put it like that, I I I I see why Slanesh is not the most overpowered, busted, broken, uh, you know, well-fed chaos god. Yeah, when you when you put it into perspective, yeah, okay, okay. But okay. of course, do remember that all chaos gods are both the embodiment of good and bad. Zinch is bribery, trickery, lies, and all that, but he's also the essence of hope. Uh, oh. You know, Nurgle, like, because, you know, hope, like, things can change. Change. Change can be right, good. Right, 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 right. Nurgle is rot and death and decay, but he's also acceptance. He is, is solidarity. He is contentment. And right. and Corn is death, murder, and, and, uh, and combat, but Corn is also honesty and martial prowess and you know corn will never stab you in the back just <laughs> right to the face many <laughs> many many times as many times as it takes to get your skull so as much as much as you're aiming for clussy like you know you <laughs> might consider that a, a quite a quite a good thing to have you know you want to get a little bit of that clown ass you know you want to you want to honk them cheeks you know, <laughs> so every, sex is a is a pretty fine thing. It's not everything, but it, it's it's oh, cool. But God. Slanesh, you know, is like, hey, let's turn that to eleven. These ones go to eleven. These ones go to eleven. Yeah. Now, now all I can imagine is is now oh, just forget it. I'm not. We're not gonna go into. The, <laughs> we're not gonna are go you, into what gonna I go imagine into with Slanesh. Let's just not the movie. No, I was just oh. the Hong Kong, and it was just no. We're just. <laughs> Uh, quote, mere killing should never be enough. How much more intense oh. is the feeling of inhaling the mist created when you vibrate a foe's body until he vaporizes? How much more completely have you explored all a person that you can offer than when you breathe them into them uh, into yourself, leaving only the memory of them still a part of this world? Holy shit. Gilak Sound Warden, Warp Smith of the Emperor's Children. Whoa. So, so this fool doesn't want to just kill you. He wants to vibrate you with noise until, like, you just turn into a fine dust, and then he can just breathe you in? Noise Marines. Holy shit. Noise Marines are savages. This silence offends Slanesh. That's the, the common meme. Slanesh. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Here, wow, here's an anonymous, up. anonymous noise marine of Slanesh. The mind curdling cacophony of the battlefield. Shape it. Savor it. Add to it until your senses shake and your minds quiver with deafening bliss. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're, they're, they're weird. Yeah, noise marines are fucking weirdos. God, I, I I don't think I'd want to be a noise marine. Well, I mean, have you seen like their weapons? 
I should yeah, probably they, have it because I'm the one who says, who says it, I guess. But, well, Shai like, just put a picture of a noise ring. And is that actually like a a, a guitar flamethrower that he's like jamming on? Is that a thing? You, or is that like fan fucking, art? That... Uh, actually, I'm not quite sure because he has speakers in his legs. Yeah, I was going to say this. Uh, I, I originally thought it was like, oh, yeah, they totally have it. Then I saw the speakers in the legs and I was like, mm, I don't. I don't. I don't think uh, noise rings are rolling around with hi-fi stereos in their legs. I don't. Mm. The. Uh, I mean, the the old mini did. Yes, I think they've adjusted it because that mini is old as crap. It's the better noise ring, though, right? That's the better one. Is the uh, rainbow mohawk zebra print oh, helmet, God. leopard print pants? That's the better noise ring, and everybody in the comment section will agree with me. I I hate you. Wow. Sorry for telling the truth. They, they have a weapon called the Blastmaster. <laughs> and it's a heavy sonic weapon that when fired focuses a throbbing bass noise into an explosive sonic crescendo that can burst eyeballs and rupture internal organs. Oh. Oh, that's... that sucks. There's also the Sonic Blaster that fires a wave of harmonics that literally rips the target apart with the extreme sound. Ouch. And there's also the uh, the Doom Siren. Oh, uh, the Doom the Doom Siren is a complex arrangement of pipes and tubes around their helmets that have short range sonic attacks. Uh, they are normally used to, like stun targets and things like that. It's a close okay. combat weapon kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it just confuses them with loud noise. I, or it makes it like hard to like listen. Yeah, and all kind of yeah. Stuff. Not 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 as bad as getting literally ripped apart or getting your innards and eyeballs exploded. Not as bad. I mean, I don't I don't want to have eyes anymore in twenty twenty two. That's fair. Blow my eyes out, noise marine daddy. What the fuck? What the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck what was the that? Fuck? What the hey, fuck was that? Look on the bright side. At least I didn't ooh. -woo. Right? Oh, oh, thank God. You <laughs> just stabbed me. Thank God you didn't shoot me. Oh, darn. Exactly. See, it was just a stab. I didn't... Nothing else. Nothing worse. No owos, no uh, uwus. You know? You... I... You... <laughs> <laughs> so, more about Slanesh, huh? How about that oh How about that tall glass of Slanesh? The tall glass of... 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 of Slanoosh. Sl uh, sk <laughs> Slanoosh. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so anyway, all that, all that stuff aside, so, so that's the concept of Slanesh, you know, making sure you understand the, the, the both sides, but mm -hmm. I, I gotta be honest, when I was reading for this episode, I was reading about the realm of Slanesh, and if you remember from the, uh, corn one, we talked about, like, the corn realm, and it was all about, uh, oh, yeah, Combat, all about, like, uh, and, yeah. yeah, the arenas and all that stuff, the actual realm of Slanesh is... Really fucking creepy. Oh, wow. What a surprise. Who would have thought that Slanesh's realm of excess would be really creepy? <laughs> Who could have guessed, right? No, 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 no. You don't you don't seem to understand. It's it's like a demonic Willy Wonka. Oh. A, a demonic Willy like Okay, explain. Okay, so Okay, so you when you go to the realm of Slanesh, you are actually not barred from entry like the other domains. Slanesh wants you to come in. <laughs> yeah, Slanesh in more ways than want, one. Yeah. Once Oh my <laughs> god. What? What? Yeah, this is the I hope, This is the Slanesh I hope episode. Shai has the drum I hope Shai has the drum set. <laughs> That's a good that, Oh my god. Um so uh, for here's another here's another quote because I have like 20 of them today. Uh, I prepared to enter his realm, expecting to encounter guardians who would seek to tear into me with talons and fangs. At the least, I assumed I would find bastions to bar my progress. I found none. The land before me was open and pristine. Its fields shimmered like gold, and its forests bear fruit of sapphires and emeralds. I took a step into this place and instantly knew I was lost, just as surely as if I had been impaled on a debtor's spike. Oh. So... As you know, it's the idea of temptation. Like, come on, come by. You know, yeah. like, like, come on in. Let's, I'll, we'll show you. Um, so the there's like six or so layers of this area, and the first mm -hmm. one is the excess of riches. So when you first enter this area, 
you get all these uh, mad like ravings where the night or sorry, the day turns to night and the golden hues are replaced by like a soft blue and the sky shimmers ceaselessly. The heavens themselves are filled with diamonds that seem so close they can be plucked from the sky. If you just reached a little bit further. Damn. So many try to do that and not pay attention. The higher and higher they climb, climbing trees made of literally pure gold or leaping from them, they plummet back to the ground, fracturing their skulls and rupturing their organs. Oh, and then they kind of just stare up in the sky, reaching for the jewels with this temporary joy of like, the beauty of the sky before they eventually forfeit their soul and die. Um, ooh, that sucks. That's ooh. so you get put in like a trance at how beautiful the diamonds are, and you don't care how you get them. You're just gonna keep trying to get them until you inevitably like kill yourself. Basically, or if you don't ooh. have that, you get like a gentle breeze that has the grass like shimmer. And, and each of the blades of grass and branches and, and trees reflect like a warm golden light, all of it made of gold. The, the fields and pathways, the cobblestones and such, they're not granite or anything of that nature. They're rubies and emeralds Damn. with loose gemstones and, and gold nuggets around. And they'll, people will slip them into their pockets because there's always room for another stone or you know, a little bit of gold. Yeah, there's room for more, for excess, right? Excess gold, excess gems, excess money. Eventually, their pockets will become so full and so heavy that they won't be able to, to move anymore. But where they refuse to get rid of the gold and the jewels. They will oh. collapse under the weight of it, and then right where they were picking up the, uh, the gold and jewels, they will join along with bones from the other people who could not, uh, could not carry oh. all, the, all the stuff. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, so so really like demonic Willy Wonka, you know? Yeah, yeah, that is definitely a demonic Willy Wonka. Um, so has anybody ever tread into Slanesh's realm and not been overcome by like the money? I mean, someone must have because if there's the multiple money. layers, right? If there's multiple layers, there's got to be like first layer money, second layer excess of uh, uh, like uh, food. Um, and then there's got to be like excess of sex, excess of. I'm I'm assuming there are. It, it's like an onion. You peel it back, and you got more layers. Pretty impressed, DK. You basically nailed nailed that right in the in the row. Let's so go. the if you make it past the excess of riches, you will then enter the excess of sustenance. Okay. And the excess of sustenance is when you move it when you move your way into there, you see a bunch like a like a smattering of pale islands with a bunch of bridges. And under these bridges are rivers, and the rivers are nothing but pure wine. Oh, all right. <laughs> rivers and, of wine, nice. Rivers of wine, but the, there are no cups to fill your wine glass. Or there's no cups to fill with wine. And, but the bouquet of wine is so enticing that you eventually just go to the river and put your head down there so you can get a big mouthful of it. And right. as you keep drinking your wine, you, you just fall to your, le uh, to your knees and you just swim with this intoxication. You drink and you drink and you drink until eventually you slip below the surface and you're never seen again. Oh, uh, you literally drown in the wine that you're uh, you, you so fall in. by. Damn. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you wow. Re really is like a demonic Willy Wonka because it's like uh, Augustus Gloop. Where he's, uh, yeah. he, he wants that chocolate. He wants that river of chocolate. And then just, ah, and then he gets sucked up into the tubes. And, then, and Gene Wilder could give a shit. He don't give a fuck. He warned him. He told him not to do it. At least, mm -hmm. at least Augustus got a warning. You go to the realm of Slanesh and it probably just, it, it, it do happen. So that, Willy Wonka, Slanesh is just like, yeah, drink it, you fat ass. Yeah, drink it, bitch. You won't. Um, now, if you are able to lift your head from the wide, you'll be able to gaze onto the islands and see hundreds upon hundreds of giant great tables filled with giant feasts, fruits, breads, all kinds of meats, everything. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the only way to get there generally is to swim to these islands, uh, which will... Wine. Through the wine, which will often <laughs> have you not be able to make it and then drown in the waters and never nice. to be seen again. Mm -hmm. Those of you who do make it, however, 
are, are able to get an astonishing amount of food. The finest meal you will ever experience. Every single morsel of food is a delight. And, a, and they faster and faster they eat and they eat handfuls and handfuls of food down their throat. Damn. And in this need to eat, they do not notice that some of the meat comes from carcasses that look awfully familiar. Oh no, are those, oh. Even if they were to somehow stop forcing food into their bodies, they would not notice quick enough that once they do eat till they literally have their stomach burst, they keel over dead. Now the new uh, part, of the uh, part of the feast that they uh, uh, for the next person to arrive to. Gross. And nobody notices that it's a human. They all just think it's they're just feast part of, of the feast. They're the decadent meats. They're being oh, slanesh. Gross. That is that is some slanesh bullshit. Yep. That's some that's some seven starring <coughs> Brad Pitt bullshit. Oh yeah, that is definitely something that could yeah. This feels a lot like Seven. Uh, well, it feels a lot like uh, what Dante's Inferno as you as you keep progressing down each new stage of hell. Mm hmm. Yep. Seven that's... deadly sins kind of thing. Yep. 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 The next one is the excess of bodily delights. Ah, uh, we've we've reached ah, the, the sexy times. I assume we have we have reached the coom cocoon. <laughs> the coom coon, if you will. Coom coon. The coom coon, if you will. <laughs> um. So the third ring of the domain is all about the vision, sense, experiences that overload the mind and body here, because there's rich fields of like textured grass with like these these little glinted uh, golden hues on the top, and there's little tents spun of of dream threads that reflect a vision from the subconscious of those who gaze on it. They're like sitting there, and in fact, they're forming these weird, like sinuous corridors, so oh. narrow that a traveler can't uh, help but brush upon, br brush against them, and feel like the embrace of these corridors. So for each vista, they have all these like decadent. How's this pronounced? Like ta tableaus? Ta ta t a b l e a u s. Table. Sounds like some French bullshit. Sure, I don't know. They're all twisting and inviting, you know? Okay, okay. Um, but these are flesh dens of the elegant oh. underhive or, or parlors of spires that are... It's just, like, it's demons and mortal bodies just kind of intertwine as they get trapped in here. Oh. Forms look, that go so beautiful, they're difficult to look at, but they're, like, beckoning. Mm -hmm. So you really can't resist it. Oh. All right. So it's it's this weird kind of idea where you're going through these corridors and, 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 and spires and undercities of, of flesh and, and grass. Uh, and there's a heavy intoxicating musk in the air as well. So to the point where you kind of like become part of it. Oh, no, that's oh, that's that's unfortunate. You become part of the corridor. Well, you, it becomes such like a stimu such a heavy stimulation that your flesh becomes super hypersensitive. So even like the air is a tender oh. caress and and sense arrive to you as you're like going through these corridors and passageways and things are touching you and feeling you. Oh, and at this point, I, you're I so see. you're so like eyes in the back of your head that at that point, demons and demonettes will will come to you. And close in on their victims with their claws and razor mouths and all that stuff. Oh boy! So this this area just makes you like hypersensitive to like any touch. Yeah, it's almost like you're you're. Yeah, everything is just super hypersensitive. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. Oh man, then getting ripped apart by demons would be extraordinarily way more painful than it normally would be. Mm hmm. Oh, that's unfortunate. That, yep. That's, Pain that's, is a pleasure all its own for Slanesh. Yep. That is Omega Oof. That that's, Omega Oof. That's a that's a stinger. Oof. Um. So, the excess of next one is the excess of adoration. This one's a little bit oh. more more interesting. Um. So, this is glory. 
Mm -hmm. This is uh, effects of, of the military, of, of heroes. The concept of, of, a, of a hero returning from a battle, like chin up, held high. They're showered with praise, adoration. Excellent work, Caiaphas Kane. Wonderful job, Kane. Oh, uh, Kane, that time when you took a fat steaming dump on your desk and that warded away the tyranids. Incredible idea, Kane. <laughs> When you had explosive <laughs> diarrhea and that made the orcs not want to chase us. Excellent job, Kane. You saved us all, Kane. Well done. Yeah. So this, of course, also leaders in the government. There's church leaders, cult leaders, etc. Even mm -hmm. even small things like like a father who wants their kids to look up to them. This oh, okay. idea of adoration is the fourth circle. Now, for each one of each person who arrives there, their experience is unique. Some will have giant, like, parades, greeting a soldier, cheering his name, making statues in his honor. There is a, a governor from a planet who has complete order, and the entire system is ran perfectly. But whatever this scenario is, the victim finds it incredibly difficult to pull themselves out of this vision and dream. Naturally. Um, however, unlike the dreams experienced by, like, a normal person like you and me, these yeah. illusions do nothing to seem impossible oh oh they that's, don't act that's some too tricky weird. bullshit so it's a very believable vision that's just like it doesn't do anything crazy it doesn't you're not like oh yeah you can fly and you have superpowers and you're the king of the world it's just all very plausible shit kind of yeah, it's it's very like like you know you you think of a dream and and sometimes you'll know you're in a dream because it sure. was just so outlandish. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't this doesn't try that. This tries to be real, but it tries to be genuine. Oh, that's some tricky bullshit. That's some tricky tricky bullshit. Now some people will be able to see through this or have self doubt in themselves, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to break free. And when they do, the dream will shatter. Sometimes only for an instant, revealing. An endless, endless plane of nothing but black soot. Upon oh, it wow. are the uh, the heaps of bones and bodies of the millions and billions of others who did not get out of the dream. Whoa. A long imagine imagine that damn that famous green uh, Microsoft screen uh, uh, wallpaper of the Rolling Hills. <laughs> yeah, and it's just but it soot. It's just black soot and ash of bones of people who couldn't break free. Oh, wow. Well, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm, I'm surprised that that many people have made it to that level. Because you got to get I mean, through it depends the other on who levels you are. first, right? It depends on who you are. Yeah. I mean, some people are able to, to see through the powers of Slanesh that way. Yeah. And, um, well, I guess Slanesh has been around for a really long time. So there's been plenty of time to accumulate souls down there. Mm-hmm. The next one, the fifth one, is the excess of achievement. Okay. Now, this is the idea that this is mainly for soldiers. Um, and the like, for instance, when the emperor created the space marines, he faced difficult tasks that was engineering a warrior that was eager to serve him through deeds of heroism and by achieving the impossible. So it's not about admiration. It's about duty. It's about actually doing it right it's about earning your place i, now, I was kind of hoping you were going to say it's it's not about duty it's it's about the mets it's That's about the case. mets baby <laughs> it's about the sex baby yeah gotta get that sex gotta get gotta get gotta get laid gotta get that get a home run baby get, you know, get a home run get the third base baby <laughs> um of course as we know didn't work because nine of his boys rebelled yep uh but he fucked up for here, the fifth domain domain has the idea of these blasphemous tales of a perfect achievement are to be believed. It what appears to be a grand forest, which are a bunch of majestic trees um, that have a bunch of glades and all that. And of course, it's a trap, like always. Naturally. Um, yeah. yep, yep. The long walk there gives it time to like the person time to wander. The glades being very inviting, you know, very serene. Sure. And in the in the center of each glade is a perfectly still pool that invites the traveler to sit and reflect upon their thoughts. So yeah. as they stare into the pool, they recall accomplishments and, and dwells on what more they could achieve. 
Okay. So, but sitting in there, lost in their thoughts, the undergrowth of the glade begins to creep on them. Oh. So as he closes their eye, or he or she closes their eyes and imagines themselves like striking down these legendary foes and conquering the galaxy and defeating civilizations, negotiating trade uh, deals, you know, real achievements. Yeah. The water of the pool rise up and take the shape of whatever represents defeat for them. Oh, that's fucked up. And once they realize the defeat is there, they see the slang is amiss. And by the time they realize slang is amiss, their right. eyes open and they're confronted with a vision of shame just before the branches and vines around him start to rip and tear at their flesh and strangle the air from their lungs. Oh, man. That is like and all encompassing defeat because they, they see their vision of defeat as they're getting like ripped apart by these vines. They are literally oh. seeing them at their highest of highs and then brought to the lowest of lowest lows. Lowest of lows. Oh, that's so messed up. That's, that's the, pretty fucked the, up. Uh, the, so the sound of their final scream, stifled by a lack of air, is one of the Prince of Pleasure's favorite things. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 yeah. Yep. Because mm -hmm. you're taking now, a high and mighty warrior and you're really bringing them down and making them feel the most despair possible. So yeah, I bet Slanesh loves that. That's a fine Chianti, if you will. With uh, Did you have his liver also? With some fava beans? I can't do the sound. Of the <laughs> I can't do the sound. Of, yeah, he used to do the sound. Well, that's not how he does it, but yeah, sure. Whatever. Okay. Uh, now, some people, of course, resist the urge to dream, and they'll get out before the vines and stuff entangle them. And then that leads us to our sixth and final circle, which is the excess of repose. Remember, the six is the sacred number. Yep. Obviously, life in the 41st millennium is really tough. Shit's really tough. <laughs> no kidding. You don't say. Shit Understatement sucks. of the millennium. Life in the 41st century is tough. <laughs> so this one, everyone, everyone everywhere needs mm -hmm. rest. Sure. Everyone needs rest. And so at the excess of repose, sometimes you just need that. You feel like you deserve a, a little repose just for a bit. A just for a nap. moment. Yeah. A little power nap. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. pretty good. So at this point, after emerging from the torments of the five other domains, this person, anyone who could resist the seduction here would, would honestly become legendary. <laughs> uh, awaiting the traveler are the whispers of wretches languishing in perfumed palaces and pleasure dens. A vision oh. of, of true sublime peace. Aphrodite, except she's crazy. Cra crazier <laughs> than normal. Yeah, I was going to say, Greek gods are all fucking insane, but okay. Um, all, at this point, struggle, torment, it's all an old memory. Here there is a beach of soft sand, Rays of warm golden sun, gentle breezes from scattered clouds, music is carried upon these breezes. The ground itself rises up and caresses the weary wanderer. Even ch little yeah. cherubs will remove armor plates and burdensome belongings. Wow. And coalescing from the salted mists are figures with placid features and soothing hands to r approach and rub tired muscles. Damn. It is, it is an eternal peace if the will is not strong enough to snap back into consciousness and snap back to reality. Oop, this goes gravity. <laughs> <laughs> you only get one shot. Um, however, determination will naturally send the pallid apparition screaming back into the seas as you're able to push them away. Yeah, I, I can imagine this is a very... Like, after going through the other five little realms, like, this got to be real appealing to just be like, you know what? Yeah, I did it. I reached the end. Soft sands, <laughs> women, the whole nine, let me die. And then, yeah, I, I could see that. You know, honestly, it's a little bit bizarre because... Reading this here, there's nothing that indicates that there's actually a um, 
There's nothing that indicates that there's actually a negative to this one. Oh. Like, really? This is just a realm. Unless I'm not reading this properly, it, it see it like this is peace. You're so done. So once you make it to the sixth realm, you can literally just chill and nothing bad will happen to you? It seems like you'll just be so intoxicated by this that you'll kind of be loopy and then you'll just die. I mean, there are much worse ways to go in, in 40k. I mean, that doesn't sound so bad of having everlasting peace. Well, not everlasting, but to just live out the rest of your life in, in, in peace and harmony and uh, paradise. I... There are way worse ways to go. And imagine if you were a space marine or an imperial guard. And it's like, yeah, I could just go back to the Imperium and suffer for the rest of my fucking life being unappreciated by that idiot emperor. I said it, idiot emperor. Um, or you could just do, do chill. Remem do remember, DK, this is only if you, one, get past the other five layers of Slaanesh's area. <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, okay, fair. Yeah, that's, not everybody can do and, that. And... And two, I mean, you're gonna die. Yeah, you but everybody's you are gonna die this... sometime. Like, why not live like, out the rest of your life in paradise? Well, okay, so remember, both sides of the coin, right? So Nash, both sides of the coin. It's just, I think it's just the idea that, like, this is all you'll ever be. No one will remember you. You'll yeah. fade into nothingness. You are, you are no different than a guy who who had a successful career ahead of you and decided to stay in, in his mom's house until you were 50, all your friends left you, and then you have a heart attack and died. Would I, do I like playing video games all day and jerking off? You fucking know I do, but it's not... I don't know, man. Uh, that sounds pretty fulfilling to me. I'm okay with that. All right, fair enough. But you get, you get, you get <laughs> yeah, the I get point. The idea. It, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's just nothingness. So... Once you make it past this last one, do you just go to meet, like, do you actually just go and confront Slanesh? Ah, so once you're able to get your resolve and, and break through the, um, the concept of stopping, you get your armor back, your possessions back, and you make it through to the final destination known as the Palace of Pleasure. This ah. is the actual Slanesh's domain itself. And during this period of time, Slash takes a lot of enjoyment in watching you go through this thing. I bet. Uh, the first couple, the first couple layers doesn't really care much about. People die there all the time. But when you get mm -hmm. to four, five, and six, Slash is like, "Oh shit! Okay, okay, hey, we're eating good. We're eating good tonight, boys." Mm hmm. So, uh, when you finally do reach the the unnatural palace of pleasure, the Slash's actual residence, their seat of power, you would mm -hmm. assume. It would be defended by demonettes and fiends, keepers of secrets. But, uh, but no. It is... No? No. There are, uh, you know, there's no walls that must be destroyed and, and, and have the de demise and, like, siege craft. No. Sonesh has no need of such defenses. Any invading force from a space marine to a legion of bloodletters from, from Korm would find that the only guardians of the palace would be statues and perfectly shaped trees huh okay so not what i was expecting but all right they're obviously the invaders might be confused mm -hmm. uh but they can't prepare for the presence of slanesh the master itself you know as they contemplate uh this weird lack of defense the air will still unseen choirs will sing and ears will weep at the unholy harmonies. A, a literal god will emerge from its palace. The, wow. the Dark Prince itself will stride confidently towards the invaders and smile at them. And okay. it is enough to disarm everybody. Wow. Anyone. Just with a smile and everybody's just like, oh shit. And they just throw down their arms and they're just disarmored. I quote this, resistance in the face of perfection is not a possibility. There's no need. Slanesh itself is too strong. Slanesh's features and power and, and beauty is all that's needed. Damn. For here's the thing. There are no first-hand accounts of Slanesh. Well, I would imagine not, because... 
I, once once you get to that point, you can't resist, and you're not going to, like, fight Slanesh. And even if you did, you probably wouldn't win. No one has ever seen Slanesh like this and won. The, the, yeah. There's there's theories that the, the statues are actually the frozen and, and um, uh, like, smiling foes that made it to that circle. Yeah, Maybe that, a, that's a, what a, I assume. A strong those were. marine, yeah, like yeah. a strong space marine or something, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Damn, there so is. They, so they make it all that way to the sixth realm uh, and past the sixth realm, and then Slanes just smiles at you, and then it's just over. They the palace doors open, and right there is Slanesh doing the Amogus twerking crewmate. <laughs> And they're like, joyous be, praise upon. <laughs> you may be sussy, but you are great. And then sh -sh -sh, stoned. Stone. A little bit of Medusa going on there, you mm -hmm. know? Sure, sure. So are there accounts of people that have made it to see Slanesh that, that know about this? Like, No, there are no firsthand accounts. Then how does, any, how does this story get told? Word of mouth. Other Slanesh demons maybe sing of it perhaps oh, the emperor's okay. children have heard of it a, a a large demon perhaps a a keeper of secrets said at some point who knows okay is, is there any account of someone making it to like the say the fourth realm and then being like this is fucked up i'm out and then just like leaving or can you not leave once you've i don't know um, I, I wonder if perhaps certain Emperor's Children people might have gotten to a certain point and then backed out before they realized what was happening. Yeah. Um, maybe, I, I bet, like, someone like Aramin, I bet he would be able to be like, huh, there's boobies in here. Ew! <laughs> Ew! Yucky! Ew! I'm out of here! Yeah. Ew! I'm gonna go read my book! <laughs> I've got manga to read. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I actually don't really know. Because I mean, there are certain people like I don't know Caldor Drago who's just chilling in the warp, being a being a stupid <laughs> little dude. Um, but I don't know actually. My my mind tells me that uh, oh you're shy. I was thinking like maybe there's a happy ending to this journey. It would be a traveler becoming a demon princess, Slanesh. But actually, if you resist all temptations, Slanesh probably has no use for your ass. Yeah, true. If you resisted all those temptations, then well. Unless she thought it would be funny to take someone that resisted all those temptations and turn them into a demon of temptation. Perhaps, perhaps, maybe, like, maybe you become a certain demon depending on what layer you fail at. Perhaps the, oh. the layer of excess, excess is like a demonette, and then you can get some seekers after that, some fiends after okay. that, and maybe if you make it to Slanesh, you become, like, a keeper of secrets. Maybe. Uh, also, that, I don't, I don't uh, know. that... I'm assuming, is that fan art that Shai posted of Slanesh? That would be fan art, yeah. That's pretty it's a good dope. one, though. Now, I mean, like, yeah, there's the big boba, and she's very waifu, or they are very waifu. But the uh, the the like the dark wings with all those creepy ass eyeballs in it look really cool. There's some good interpretations of Slanesh. Uh, often, all of the demons and stuff are very much androgynous. Is that the term? Mm -hmm. Androgynous, male, female. Yeah, I, th I think so. Is that okay? Yeah, it's very much like. They look like men and women together. They they have a very like hermaphrodite right. kind of kind of style. I, I don't know the word for it, but yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. It, it's like either works. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's it's interesting. De def definitely, like I mentioned before, that uh, Slanesh is is referred to and seen as Big Boba and yeah. all that stuff. But um, that's just kind of. I think it makes it easier. You know, yeah. if you if you draw yeah, Slanesh yeah. as big as big Boba and everything like that, at least it, like you kind of get the point across. Yeah. Uh, and then once sure. you learn a bit more about the idea, and you you learn a little bit more about like okay, no, it's male and female kind of combo. It, it's yeah. called a prince, but they're referred to like she who thirsts and the prince of pleasure. Yeah. So you know, it's a little bit of everything. Well, and if you want to tempt everybody, you know, being mm -hmm. both is is you know. You appeal to the entire audience and not just, you know. They also have a lot of, a lot of like snapping claws and it, this is some really weird stuff. Like, like they talk about the, oh, the, well, that is weird. the caress of a Slanesh demonette or like it's a kiss, 
you know, you, 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 you're making out with a Slanesh demonette, but her teeth are as sharp as razor blades and her tongue is barbed. Oh, you know, and it's wow, it's that's like a, that sounds awful. It's like that kind of shit, you know. Oof, Yikes. it's not good. I yeah, I don't think I'd want to ever fight a Slanesh demon. I mean, I never want to fight a demon, period. But those Slanesh demons seem pretty bad. I I actually like to talk. Uh, I was actually planning on talking about the Slanesh demons themselves in this episode. But I we went too long on the on the rings because I thought the the demonic Willy Wonka was super cool and it, oh, yeah. I, it caught me it caught me really off guard. It's it's very telling about Slanesh too and like what Slanesh sort of like wants from people or what Slanesh wants to drain from you and how Slanesh sort of drains that from you and sort of how Slanesh works. So I I don't mind that we went long on the 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 sort of six rings of hell. Uh, with Slanesh. So there's no no one, there's no account of someone like trying to storm Slanesh's realm and making it I I don't know. If there is comments will tell me otherwise okay. and if they don't then it might be in an obscure book or something. Perhaps in like a Fulgrim perhaps it's in Fulgrim mm -hmm. or, or one of those like uh, Emperor's Children books might talk about it but at the current moment I'm not sure. Because that sounds like a great setting for a book, is like uh, some some uh, space marine chapter that's just like, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a siege on Slanesh, and um, they make it all the way down to Slanesh, but they just they get wiped out there. But it's like the whole book is like really good explanation on each level and what happens at it, and they're losing their friends, and only the hardest make it to the end, and ah, that'd be pretty cool. There's a, I would, I would very much say that, uh, uh, I would love someone who would make a board, like a, like a custom terrain thing of like one of the layers of Slanesh. Oh, that'd be so sick. Yeah, that'd be really dope. Uh, yeah, we don't count Kaldor Drago paradise. when it comes to the, we don't count Kaldor Drago when it comes to this stuff because it's just all the shenanigans, but Who's Kaldor regardless, Drago again? chapter master, sort of, kind of, grand master of the Grey Knights. His, his old lord. yet, have we? Yeah, like, you know how you don't like Ultramarines because they're like, they always win and they're such goody boys and all that? Yeah, um, yeah. He He's like the worst example. Oh, well, fuck him then. <laughs> all right, we'll talk about it some other day. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, anyway, I, we're going to run this one out, you know? <laughs> it's, this was this was a fun a fun conversation. We'll do an episode yes. later on the demon nets themselves and the specific demons, but for the time being, good times. Uh, yeah. DK, my friend. Yes. My, Come. my, oh, well, I, mean, I don't usually do it on command, but if you insist. Um... <laughs> End the episode, Shy. <laughs> we got business to do. 